Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. And before we dive into today's Kiki, which is exposing the Bravo slash Evolution media producer, Alex Baskin, for protecting certain talent over others. Now, I said he's a Bravo producer, but he's a producer for Bravo shows through Evolution Media, which is the production company that produces these shows. So I'm going to break down how he's been protecting Tom Sandoval, Kyle Richards, the full Fox 5, and all of it. So before we dive in, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's go. So the first thing that I want to say about Alice Baskin is don't forget, this is the same producer that did the Variety interview, that did the um, For Your Consideration interview with Lala and Elisa Vanderpump. And he was the one that was like, oh, wait for the end of part three of the Vanderpump Rules reunion. There's going to be this twist. There's going to be this reveal. It's new information. It's going to make the cast not want to sign their contracts. And then it turned out it was a big nothing burger. It was nothing but Raquel just admitting to having sex with Sandoval multiple times, which is something that we all knew. So to me, he either lied and said that it was some new information, a twist to keep it going, or he's just not tuned into what actually is going on on the show. But it has to be one of the two. But let's keep going. Number one, this is what is also very weird to me. This, I found this. So back in July of 2022, Alex Baskin was supposedly leaving or was fired from Evolution Media. We're in June of 2023. This is almost a year ago. And I'm going to read the article. How come he's still working for Evolution Media? He's still producing um, Vanderpump Rules. Maybe not producing Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm not sure. But according to all the things that came out, he was supposedly leaving Evolution a year ago. So this is from iBrandon TV. It says Alex Baskin exits Evolution Media. Alex joined Evolution in 2006, and he has been an executive producer on more than 30 shows under their umbrella, but it seems changes in the air. Just three short years ago, Evolution Media, an MGM company that has produced hits like The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Vanderpump Rules, Botched, and more, promoted Alex to president and hired industry veteran Robbie Golam as executive vice president of development. During this promotion for Alex, Barry, MGM's president, Unscripted Television said, as Evolution Media continues to grow and produce outstanding content, it is essential to have leaders in place that have their experience and mind for strategy that will, that will propel the company to even greater heights. As president, Alex led the company, setting overall strategy and overseeing day-to-day -day operations and the development team. He provided creative oversight for all Evolution Media productions. This is key. Creative oversight. What that means is he was in charge of storylines. Creative oversight, how the vision comes to life, how it is created. So he was in, char in, in charge of storylines. That's important because as we know, on reality TV, whether you're a cast member of Vanderpump Rules or you're a housewife, you are concerned about what is my storyline going to be? What is my edit and how am I going to be betrayed? And he was the guy in head of all of that. Kyle reported directly into Barry. Kyle Richards, a real housewife of Beverly Hills since season one, even posted on her Instagram story confirming that Alex is leaving Evolution Media. This was after Alex himself posted on Instagram with the caption, that's a wrap, thank you. There is no word on what Alex's next move will be or if he will still be involved in the dynamic shows he had a hand in at Evolution Media. But judging from the reactions of many housewife icons on Instagram, it doesn't seem like he will be returning to the saddle with Evolution Media 
anytime soon. Okay. And I have um, the, the posts and stuff that Kyle did and all of that. Now, my question is this, and the reason why I'm opening up with this is, when did Alex come back to Evolution Media? Was he not let go? Because this was over a year ago or nearly a year ago that he allegedly left Evolution Media, but he's still the executive producer of Vanna Pump Rules and he's clearly been very vocal. So I'm confused. If I leave or get fired from a company a year ago, why am I still at that company overseeing television shows and series? That's really weird to me. Really weird, really bizarre. I don't know what is going on there. Okay. Now that let's just open up with that little question mark. Now that brings us to the second part of this, okay, which is how Alex Baskin has a reputation for protecting people like Kyle Richards, Teddy Mellencamp, Lisa Vanderpump, and the faux Fox Five. So this is from uh, Screen Rant and Reddit are my sources. It says, no wonder Kyle says this really might be her last season. Chris got fired left um, after last after season 10. And now the other producer that makes sure to edit Kyle in the best light is leaving slash fired from evolution. It's indeed a new day. No more protection. Okay. This goes on to say. This is really interesting news. Oh, wait, let's go to the top. Kyle posted on her IG story that Alex Baskin, a.k.a. the main producer of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, since season one, is finally leaving Evolution. This is the producer that is very close with Kyle, Teddy, and the faux Fox Five. Is this what we need to finally shake up the cast? Hopefully, Evolution is reading audience feedback and will give Garcelle, Sutton, Sheree, well, Sheree before she fell off, as the front runners next season. This is really interesting news. People talk about how much they want this or that housewife to not be on the show anymore, but a producer who's been there so long leaving will probably have a much huger impact on the show than even all the housewives we hate not being on the show anymore. And this is true. Because like I said earlier, it's the producers who have the creative oversight. They decide what gets included in the show, what doesn't get included in the show, all of the edits, all of the storylines. I think it's interesting that it feels like there has already been some kind of significant change in the dynamic of the show this season. People have theorized different reasons why Kyle's misdeeds have been aired this year when they could have simply not aired them like they probably did in the past. It seems Garcelle and Sutton are being given a much more prominent position. I theorize that that's probably because they are a, a that they are a factor hugely popular with the fans and therefore do have more power. But this is interesting news. I wonder how it impacted the season we're currently watching. I wonder what the reasons are for him leaving and if things were already starting to happen around him leaving on this current season we're watching, I have a lot of questions. Now, again, this was from last year. So this is why last season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills we saw more of the real Kyle and the real Lisa Renna because they weren't getting that favoritism. They weren't getting that protection. They weren't getting the edits that they usually got. Because don't forget, there have been Mauricio, Kyle's husband, has had cheating allegations almost every other month for the last decade but yet they only slightly touched upon it one time and it was in the and they put the kibosh on it the agency has been sued time and time and time again but they never talk about mauricio's lawsuits ever on the show so certain people were getting certain protection and certain edits because producers were protecting them and everyone's saying it was Alex Baskin who was protecting them. And that's why Kyle, in her mind, thought she was a fan favorite, even though she wasn't, because she was being protected. And so was the faux Fox 5, because he's really close to Teddy. He was close to Lisa Renna. He was obviously close to Kyle. 
This was also shown on um, Screen Rant. You know, why Real Housewives of Beverly Hills fans think Kyle is ready to leave the show was because the producers that protected her, one producer name was Chris. He left a little bit before Alex did. And then Alex was leaving and she was like, well, I'm no longer going to get, you know, the edits I want and her true colors really were going to show. This might also be why they were able to get away with everything for so long as they did. But now... But again, I don't know if he left just producing Real Housewives because he's still an executive producer on Vanderpump Rules. Now, he is the co-creator with Lisa Vanderpump, not Andy Cohen. A lot of people get it twisted. Andy Cohen has no power over Vanderpump Rules. He's not a producer. He just literally just hosts the reunions, but he doesn't have any power, unlike the Housewives franchises. Okay. Now, let's move on to what this still has to do with Vanderpump Rules more. So I thought this was really interesting. Okay, let me get it. I was listening to the Call Her Daddy podcast, and it had Stassi on it. And Stassi revealed some tea about the editing on the show. But let's listen to what Stassi had to say because she really calls out the producer for what they did. Okay? So let's listen. Holy fuck. And yeah. then I I was like, I feel like I'm thrown right back into something that I've been away from yeah. for so long. But it's it's like, is it my place to be a part of it or is it not my place? <sighs> I don't know. And then I have all of these people just DMing me. I mean, I've never been DM'd more about anything than I was about like, I'm going to, or commenting in it and attaching or tagging me in it being like, I'm going to need Stassi to weigh in. I'm going to need Stassi to weigh in. I'm like, but I don't know if it's my place anymore. And right. I've been out of this for so long that like I think it would be kind of fucking weird if it. I'm like going on my Instagram and being like this is my take on yeah and like I, it, it was all it was it, it's been kind of like a mind fuck which is weird to say because it's not even happening to me I kind of agree you know? and I that's what when I when I had Ariana on I was like it was actually so weird because the amount of people that were like fuck like we kind of wanted you to have Raquel on and I was like this is why I also hate <laughs> the internet so much because whenever I have villains on the show everyone's like canceled when I don't have them on then they're pissed but when I have them on they're pissed whatever yeah. but did you ever like Tom Sandoval no I mean uh, no uh, and he never liked me and yeah. that's the thing you know I will say this not being on this last season it's like my my talents were wasted <laughs> because I could have you know this know. was when I could have really just like Stepped given it up. to him and been like I've always knew <laughs> right right and there's got to be something that everyone w is seeing in him but like he I feel like has always been a slime ball well that's interesting that you say that just because I felt like he was always so beloved and so yeah. and I would even I would say to my producers I'm like when is he gonna get the edit that like I've I feel like the rest of us see uh -huh. like why does he keep like getting away with being just this dude who just wants to like give people things and help people out man and like all of that I'm like that's not what I'm seeing I'm seeing somebody who's constantly po like blaming others for things and dredging things up from the past and like and just deflecting constantly yeah like if like the rest of us look bad then he looks good and right and i've always felt that way and so yeah See, you fact, know the fact that i'm not on it this season it's like fuck you know yeah do you miss reality tv okay you guys well first shout out to kathy turney thank you so much for becoming a channel member kathy i really really appreciate you for that thank you but now let's get into dissecting what she's actually said. So she said, I've seen the real Tom Sandoval. We've all seen the real Tom Sandoval. And I would go to the producers and say, when is he going to get the edit that A, we all get? Because nobody protected Stassi or Katie or Jax or Kristen or any of them. But yet Tom Sandoval always got the edit, just like Stassi said, that he was just, oh, you know, man, like, I just want to help everybody out and I just go above and beyond and blah, 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 blah. You know, he always kind of got that, you know, Captain Save-A-Ho edit when he really was the villain the entire time. And like I said at the beginning of the video, 
It's the producers, particularly the executive producers, who have creative control of what they show and what they don't show. Jax Taylor, that's why I have him on the screen, he also said this, you know, that they would let Tom and Tom throw Jax under the bus because we know Jax has been extremely problematic. We all know that in order to deflect from what Tom and Tom were actually doing. And the producers would clearly go along with that. And Jax also said that when Scandaval broke, um, someone in the industry that they work with, either another producer called him and was like, hey man, you were always right about that guy. This story just broke. So people knew, but Tom was just being protected by these producers. And it's like, why are they protecting Tom Sandoval? Also how we know that they were being protected. Alex Baskin himself said it. He said that when he, when, cause when the producers were being either Alex said it or other producers said it, but Andy Cohen was the one who spilled the tea because he was like, you know, asking them. Cause remember Andy's not a producer on the show. So he's watching it just like we are. He's not involved. And so he said to them, how did you guys not know? To the producers, like you guys must have known. And Andy Cohen told it that they said, oh, we just took Ariana's lead. So we never followed the story. Excuse me, sir. You are the producers of the show and you are letting the talent dictate what you do and do not follow as a storyline? What? That's why they had to pick up the cameras once everything broke instead of actually in real time while they were filming, crack the case. I'm so confused about that. Why are they following Ariana's lead about the storylines they portray? They are supposed to be documenting and actually showing what's going on, not working with favoritism. So that right there tells you that they have been protected. And this is the same exact producer that was called out for protecting Kyle Richards and Teddy and Lisa Brenna and Erica, all the faux Fox five, especially in their whole mean girl era. So that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. And but wait, there's more. There's more, you guys. Okay, let me make sure I got all those points, and then I want to go into um, letting you guys listen to this from the horse's mouth, okay? Okay, so I went over all those points. Now, this is from the horse's mouth himself. So there is this pod, this podcast called I've Had It. I'm obsessed with this podcast. It's hosted by Jenny and Pumps. I love them. I love them, love them, love them, love them, love them. And he was a guest on their podcast yesterday. I think it was yesterday the podcast dropped and I listened to it this morning and I was super excited. I was like, oh my gosh, what a great crossover. Because it turns out he was actually the producer on their reality show. So Jenny and Pumps, they were on a show called Sweet Home Oklahoma on Bravo by Evolution Media, and Alex Baskin was the producer on that show. And so they had him on, and I was super excited. I was like, oh, this is going to be a great episode. But then when I heard Alex talk, I was like, what are you talking about, dude? You are either, and this is no disrespect to Alex, but it's either one or two things. Either he's doubling down on protecting these people, or he's almost like an Andy Cohen where he's just out of touch. And he doesn't actually know what's really going on in the streets. One other two. One other two. Okay, but let's listen to it. So I'm going to go through different segments of the podcast. And I'll let you listen to it. And then we'll talk about it and dissect it. Okay? So let's buckle up. You know, we, we, hey, we're just here to document so. <laughs> totally, totally. Let me ask you this. So when I watched, when did you all, uh, Evolution, the production team, when did you all find out about the uh, relationship? Well, we had heard a bunch about it. We had heard about uh, Tom and Raquel hanging out and there were suspicions. And we covered that 
at the in the end of the 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 season, which was in September. So that's when we actually shot oh. what happened at the end of the season. But we didn't know that it was anything more. And by the way, Ariana herself had heard about this and had talked about it on camera and um, and trusted Tom and trusted Raquel. So we really didn't know for certain until Ariana herself discovered on Tom's phone that there was uh, you know, exchanges between him and Raquel and Tom had to, to come clean. Did you have suspicions like prior to this? Because the episode that I watched, one of the reunions, it flashes to Ken who's like, I don't know, 75, 80 years old, right? And it sounds like he's cracked the case. It's this flashback, and he's like, hey, did y'all notice that Raquel and Tom were in the hot tub? And I thought to myself, having been on a reality TV show before, you have 30 people everywhere you go with you. And I thought, if this old motherfucker has cracked the case, <laughs> evolution had to have been onto it to some extent through the show gossip of you know of your filming cycle i mean we definitely were aware of the rumors and we were you know obviously um had heard what ken had heard but i think personally i have to say maybe i'm an idiot but i almost thought it was so blatant that it couldn't be true <laughs> I, mean, I, I really at this point too i should be the most suspicious person of all time and with, with this group in particular like where there's smoke there's fire and every rumor turns out to be true so I, I, but I, I didn't really know what to make of it, and I had just presumed, you know, that it was like, oh my god, like that is so devious. Like I don't actually believe it. Um, well, and that's know. one thing I want our listener to know. Like, so I'm new to this. I don't watch the show, but I watched it. Okay, let's break down that segment, and then we'll get into the next segment. Excuse me, sir, producer. You're like, oh, it's just too crazy to be true. I just don't believe it. Wow, that'd be devious. And there's something about his voice, I just don't believe him. I think production knew, and they chose to cover it up and protect. Because he's saying it right now. We heard stuff, we knew stuff, but Ariana d didn't find out, oh, this must be too crazy to be true. But then he talks out of both sides of his mouth. Because then he says, with this group where there's smoke, there's fire, and every rumor turns out to be true. So which is it? Either you thought this rumor wasn't true or you knew from your 10 years of working with these people that the rumors turn out to be true. I also think a reason why they were dismissing the rumors was because of the source. Because it was coming from Lala. It was coming from Katie, who they clearly had no problem throwing under the bus and giving really bad edits to. Justice for Katie Maloney. She's got a horrible edit for the last 10 years. They exploit the hell out of Lala. I mean, it's a reality show you sign up for. It. I get it. But Tom Sandoval and Ariana, if we're being honest, have gotten very, very protected edits and, and, and cuts on the show. Even at the reunion, they were skewing towards, you know, Tom Sandoval's redemption. So... Let's keep listening. But what amazed me about the reunion is these people, all of the people, the cast members, it is literally like the comment section of a social media post all in one room having oh, a yeah. verbal conversation. <laughs> right. It is like, I mean, it is keyboard courage manifested to real life. And then it's like the the gal that got cheated on, just casually this other girl, gal named Lala is like, oh yeah, I ate her out once and her boyfriend watch. And they just throw it out there super casually, which here's the deal. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not a prude. But at the same time, sometimes it's, they've all fucked each other. Lala's eating this other girl out. Then they're all so mad. Sometimes I had a hard time reconciling, like you've all fucked each other and everybody's eating each other out. So what's right. going on? Yeah. That's kind of how yeah, I, mean, I, I think what they would say is where they felt like it was a greater betrayal is they've all openly done that stuff and they've had indiscretions and they've had, you know, moments of weakness or done, done things that, that they shouldn't have done. But I think the fact that this was ongoing right, and the fact that it was right under Ariana's nose and all of their noses, I think that's really what it was. But I agree. I mean, you know, the sense of moral outrage is a little bit extreme. <laughs> I, mean, I almost felt sorry for the Raquel girl, not because, I mean, 
What she did was horrible. I didn't feel sorry for her at but all. I, they were all so hateful and mean and ganging on her. But she showed no contrition. No, she didn't show. I mean, I think she did say she was sorry, but she, she was outmatched. I, I did. I, I did not feel. I did not feel empathy for her. I didn't. I just felt like she was so outmatched. What she did is inexcusable. Period. Full stop. But I did feel like, man, she is because he. The guy with the mustache that she'd been fucking, he didn't run to her defense at all. What's his name? Sandoval? Uh, yeah. Did, what, what did you guys, what about the end? What about that, the, the coda? Did you feel bad for her after that? No. I thought that I, made that's, her look worse. That's when mm-hmm. she freaked me out even more. Yes, agree. Because at least during the the actual reunion, she was like a deer in the headlights. Okay. Right. And everybody was against her. Then when she's doing the one-on-one with, with your showrunner or one of your producers, she's talking about the affair and she's smiling and you can tell that she has, you know, very fond memories of it, her body language and everything. I was like, she feels zero remorse for this. She, and I didn't buy, I hate lying. I hate being deceitful because every time she spoke about Tommy, you could tell that she was overtly affectionate towards him. I was going to ask you this, Alex. Is she, she was so inappropriate, her affect in that one-on-one. Was she just so nervous she was smiling and giggling? Or is it that she was, like Jennifer said, just had such fond memories and it, you know, couldn't control it? I, I think that, I think she was struggling under the weight of the whole situation. And so I think that, and that was six days after the reunion, and clearly she was more unsettled than she, she even had been. Um, she's the one who initiated that conversation. So, you know, the showrunner, certainly Jeremiah, was prepared to have it and, um, and, had, and then asked her a number of specific follow-up questions. But we didn't know that was coming. I mean, we were, you know, one of the conspiracy theories we're dealing with, and there are a lot of them out there, <laughs> is like somehow that was staged or it didn't really take place after the reunion. And you guys will appreciate this. It's because, um, you know, she was wearing the same wardrobe that she had worn before. It's like, because we match wardrobes. Like, right, right. So, right. Yeah, it, exactly. Right. So it's it, like, there's nothing, you know, to catch us on there. Um, but I really felt like it was someone who, um, was having a really hard time handling the whole situation and it was saying the things that she wanted to say. It was just like, I, I am, I'm not going to hold the line that I did anymore um, and stick to a certain story that I was asked to tell. This is what happened. And so I, I felt for there. And look, I, I you know, have concerns about everybody involved. All right. Let's dissect that segment and then we'll keep listening. Alex, what? Again, the way his voice is so shaky, he's either really nervous or he's lying. There's something about his voice I don't trust. But let's break down what was actually said. Number one, shout out to Jenny and Pumps from I've Had It. I agree with them 100% on the part about um, the end of season three reunion. I said this. I did not think that did Raquel any favors. If anything, it made her look even more evil. Just like Jenny said, and I said this before too, she was smiling, she was laughing, she was remembering the sex with Tom Sandoval, she wanted to rub it in, she wanted to have that time after the reunion because she wanted to to show the world and to show Ariana and to show Lala she's special and she's different. It wasn't just a one-time thing. She did go home with him and they were having all of this sex and it's so different and special. It was not because of what Alex is saying that she just had the weight of the world on her shoulders and she just wanted to come clean. Like, miss me with that. Miss me with that. I'm so confused. And that's what he was saying at Variety and at all the events. Oh, there's this huge twist that's going to make you rethink everything. What twist was that? She literally just admitted that she was having sex with Tom Sandoval multiple times over a longer period of time all over the place, which everybody knew. So I'm really confused why Alex keeps trying to say this somehow vindicates Raquel and she just wanted to come out and like, you know, get it off her chest and tell the truth. I don't, what? What? And Pumps, I love you, Pumps, but you got to watch the show. You're having too much compassion for Raquel, but you don't watch the show. 
I was agreeing more with, with Jenny where she was like, I didn't feel any bad for her. She came on because that was the same exact read I had on Raquel too. I was like, this is a side chick who wants to stake her claim. This is not someone who realizes what they did was wrong and horrible and they are trying to make up for it and are trying to sort of get, you know, apologize to the person they did wrong. She didn't show any remorse for what she did. She showed remorse for getting caught. And this just proves to me they all knew. There's no way they didn't know. And he's either now just not in the know because we all knew or he's doing damage control and still trying to protect Tom Sandoval and protect Raquel for whatever reason. Who knows? But this, to me, did more harm than good when it comes to their credibility. You know what I mean? It's 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 ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I agree with what and I that was the same exact read on Raquel that I got the last five minutes. Not that she was some. Oh, I'm so whatever. But she wanted to make sure we all knew how far and how deep their love was. Girl, bye. But let's keep going. And any of the shows, because I think the, but especially this, because the public reaction to this is so intense. Yeah. And, you know, and we struggle with that because, like, look, are we in part to blame for that? I, I obviously, you know, we're making the most of this, right? I mean, we're milking it. But right. on the other hand, like, I do think that it's important for people to remember it is just a show. And yes, these are people's real lives and they did the totally. things that were coming. But it's like, come on, man. Okay, I have two questions. Number one, were Sandoval's tears real? Or or is he just kind of one of those manipulative crier, manipulative crier types? I, I thought those were real. I thought he was overcome with emotion. I thought he was having a, a really hard time with all that I thought. I thought that was real. Clearly, he wasn't telling the full story. Right. But I thought that, um, I, I, I really, I thought that was real. I saw him struggling that day that was not someone you know who showed up and put on a performance and by the way if it was fake then and and if he were if he you know were acting the entire time he might have done it differently right because then he would have come out theatrically from the beginning he would have said i am so sorry and he right. certainly didn't do well and I he certainly to... would not have said we fucked but she had her shirt oh, on it was so hot I'm... wait we'll get into that part i'm sorry but this <laughs> like Alex, I don't know what, I don't know. He needs a PR person. He needs a publicist because this interview did him no favors. The moment, if I had, if I had any doubt, and I mean any doubt that Alex Baskin was not protecting Tom Sandoval, this is the moment he blew it. You cannot tell me there is any person on God's green earth who thought Tom Sandoval's tears were real. Not his mama, not his daddy. Nobody on God's green earth can tell me and look me in the face with a straight face and say, I believe Tom Sandoval's tears were real. That, that's a crock of crap. That's when I was like, okay, Candy, your instincts are right. This producer has really been protecting him. He should have been, at least tried to tell the truth. Like, well, yeah, you know, maybe he was forcing it because he knew the situation, but you're telling me anybody in their right mind is going to sit sit with you in a straight face and say Tom Sandoval's tears were real? What? Like, absolutely no way. And then he also got it wrong because he says, oh, well, if he was acting, then when he first came out, he would have been like all apologetic, like, I'm sorry and all this stuff. He did do that. But what happened was Lala and James came for his neck every single time. So when Tom was starting to be like, well, you know, you guys, James and Lala cut him off and was just like, oh, come on, man, you know, whatever. They just went after him and after him, after him. But that's actually the strategy he did do. The only difference is he didn't get away with it this time because Lala and James called him out on it. So, Alex, were you watching the same reunion I watched? Because that's exactly what happened. So, according to your own logic, Tom Sandoval was lying. You just said if he was performing, this is how he would have acted in the beginning. And that's exactly how he acted in the beginning. And also, don't forget, we saw in season three, on the third part, 
um, in the dressing room, Lisa Vanderpump went and coached Tom Sandoval. Remember, she went in there and she was like, "You, we've seen you angry. We've seen you blah, blah, blah. But we haven't seen you remorseful or whatever she said, right? She's like, that's what we need to see. That's what we need to see out of you. Come on, Tom. Or whatever the hell she said. Basically being like, you've been really angry. You've been out of pocket. But you have yet to actually show any type of like remorse or any type of contrition about what you did. And then what did Tom do? Tom do. He walked on the stage and he gave that fake, you know, acting school dropout monologue about, I will always love you, Ariana. And I will root from you from afar. Like, what? Is that a monologue you got when you were trying out for acting school? Like, that was the fakest, dumbest thing I ever heard in my life with his fake tears. And Alex Baskin is now going to sit up here and tell me that Tom was really was really crying? What? If he had any credibility, that's when he lost it with me. That's when he lost it. All right, let's keep going. I mean, right then I was like, that motherfucker is a dick. He wanted it both ways. He wanted to blame Ariana for the right. affair and say that she was cold and had intimacy issues. And he wanted to blame his moral shortcomings and all of his lies and all of his deceit on her. While at the same time, he wanted to say, I'm so sorry I hurt you and I love you more than I've ever loved anybody. And to that, I would say he's very duplicitous morally, like which leads me to a diagnosis of a narcissistic personality disorder. That's I just want to go my on diagnosis. Record, the permanent record that Jennifer is not a therapist, nor does she play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great designer, though. Yes, but great also, designer. Uh, yes, and an armchair psychiatrist. Yeah, well, aren't we all? And that's kind of the fun of watching the shows. I mean, I think that you can feel like a piece of shit for doing it, but I think that you can try to, but my thing is there's a difference between explaining and justifying. And what I had said to him is explain, but don't try to justify because you should talk about what was going on in your life, what's going on in your relationship, when all of this happened, but you are in the wrong objectively. Right. And I think that he ended up getting defensive and that didn't suit him well and then he was offensive obviously in the end when he made that comment to ariana like uh, we were in the control room i'm like oh shit that is not gonna land well no no No, that makes him look horrible let me ask you this so obviously we've been on a show before we know kind of behind the scenes how this shit goes down one thing that was different is when Typically, when the cameras go down, they're down. But during the whole reunion, I mean, y'all are fucking milking that cow. I mean, it's, oh. I mean, y'all follow them like a fucking heat-seeking missile. I loved that. That was that was really good. I would hate it if I were them. I have to admit, because when you have cameras following you, you just want to be like, leave me the fuck alone. But he kind of acts out, and he's like all on one of the producers, and he's like, leave me alone. I just want to talk to her. Just stop filming me. There have been rumors per my office manager that educated me about this whole scandal, there have been rumors that he tried to persuade and get Mm -hmm. adversarial with production outside of what we saw in the reunion show. Like once y'all started filming the reveal of the affair, that he was very adversarial with evolution, with you all, with production. Can you throw us a bone on that? Yeah. I mean, I, I will, again, to the credit of this group, you know, we found out about this, like I said, on March 2nd and March 3rd, we were filming, like we filmed <laughs> the next day, but he, at one point he was pissed at us and didn't want to keep shooting before the reunion. I wouldn't call it adversarial uh, and I'm not even being like diplomatic. I it really, because we were still talking and we were still, we were figuring it out. Um, uh, Raquel had stopped filming with us. And, and we really, and she was a question mark to go to the reunion. And then a couple weeks before we started conversations with her team and obviously she ended up there. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, look, I think Tom was, was spiraling. And, and I think for, I think for the cast, I think it's really hard when they realize it's a situation they can't control. Yeah. Right. And so I think, and, and that is by the way, why we keep filming at the reunion. Cause we're sort of like, oh, okay. Now, you know, you're not going to get a moment where you guys can get your story straight or you right. want to blow off the team. You know, not happening. Like, we're so... Alex, um, if I was in your position, I would do the... Okay. 
So a couple of things, but one, I want to quickly say, shout out to Candy Cane Janelle. She says she didn't wear that blue dress at the reunion, WTF. Alex said they had her wear the same dress in the last interview. Very good point. She did not wear that blue dress at the reunion. She wore that blue dress in the pickups and the during the confessional pickups after the scandal broke. So Janelle, you're right. Why would she have to wear the same exact blue dress if the whole hook is that she's exposing all of this new information after everything happened? Why wouldn't she either A, wear that olive blazer that she wore in the one-on-one -on -one with Andy or B, just wear something new since like Alex said, it was six days later after the reunion and it was supposed to be this like explosive new information. Why would you want to act like she wore this blue dress when she gave the information before? So that's a really good catch, Janelle. Very good catch. And then also about what he was saying, um, in this last segment, Tom Sandoval was being aggressive and violent and adversarial. Stop trying to protect Tom. We saw with our own eyes. He's swearing at the producer, Jeremiah. Get the F out of my face, man. Stop filming me, man. And he did threaten to quit the show, to quit filming right, be right when they were doing the pickup shots because when they were doing that weird scene in Raquel's um, apartment, they actually kissed on camera for the first time. We don't see it in the show. They actually don't play it. But remember it was leaked and Kristen Doty had found out too that they did their first on-camera kiss and Tom Sandoval was pissed because he was like, oh, this isn't going to make me look good. I'm going to stop filming the show if you don't, if we don't do reshoot the scene. To their credit, they didn't reshoot it. But to their demise, they didn't show it. Remember, remember it came out first on camera kiss between Tom and Raquel and Kristen Doty confirmed it because we all know she's like FBI number one. But how come they didn't? Why didn't they not air their kiss? And why is he saying Tom wasn't being adversarial? If you are an employee and you are threatening to quit your job, you are swearing at your boss, you're yelling and storming off. I think that's an adversarial type of person and type of behavior. I know if I'm at a job and I threaten to quit and I swear at my boss and I yell and I go off the deep end, I'm probably going to get fired for that behavior. So stop trying to protect Tom. I'm confused. Do you work for Tom, Alex? What the hell is going on? Be honest. We have our own two eyes. All you have to do is go on page six. Do a quick search, Tom Sandoval, Raquel Kiss. It'll come up, Raider Online, TMZ. Everybody was talking about it. Kristen Doty told about it on her podcast. We already know all of that happened. So why are you protecting him? It's crazy. It's crazy. But let's keep going. Exact fucking thing. I would have cameras on these fuckers nonstop. Having been in their position before, all, although our show that we did with you wasn't controversial, yeah, I no. understand the filming fatigue. I know what it's like. Even if it's a very benign thing, you're just like, I just want to be alone. I just want everybody away from me. But if I'm you, I mean, right. I would be on them like a tick on a dog. Every camera you could put one, I'd have it there. You couldn't go to the grocery store without somebody talking about it. I mean, it was everywhere. Jennifer and I were like, who cares? Da, da, da. And then, of course, we got sucked in. But let me ask you this. How are you going to film with everybody moving forward? I mean, I'm assuming it's the same cast. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a challenge, right? It's the, the great question and the one that we really can't answer until we start filming it. But we have certain thoughts. Like, look, this group is very connected to each other. As I keep pointing out, as of this day, Tom and Ariana still live in the same house together, right? And they they are, um, uh, we'll Wait, see if that... hold up. They the, live together still? They, they live together. So, so they did that reunion and then they went back to the same house and they... You're telling me they live together? Now, they've both been out of town a bunch. And so okay. they both have a sort of receipt of their life. But, but technically, they live together. I mean, that, that is the, the you know, they, they share a domicile. So I, um, uh, so we'll cover, we'll cover that. We'll, we'll sort of see where we were. I did know, though, after the reunion, there was um, initially a thought that maybe we would just continue the next season. 
right after. And we obviously needed a break. <laughs> what, what are you planning to do after that? Right, right. right. Let me ask Swing you, and drinks at the restaurants are, are going to be interesting. Are they all coming back, Raquel, Ariana, and Tom Sandoval? I anticipate at this point that they will all be back. So I don't know definitively because we're, we're sort of, you know, we're figuring that out. But, um, yeah, but I would, uh, it's strong, I strongly think that they will all be back. You know, we know we're documenting this friend group, right? And we, and the audience has an expectation that they will see the fallout of this. Right. And not just see sort of separate camps talking about it um, or moving on into a different phase of life, but they, this is what they want to see. Right. And so I do. That's where I point out the fact that, you know, as of now, until the transaction takes place, Tom and Ariana share a house. So it would be, the, the truth is, we wouldn't be capturing the accurate story, the real story, if we didn't cover that. Right. So I think that will all we resolve. I mean, I, I don't, you said, have the, the hard and fast answers, but in a lot of ways, this group is stuck with each other anyway. I mean, um, and, and they've been in each other's lives, you know, for a long time, and, and they've shared a lot together. Um, you know, Tom's friend, his closest friend from St. Louis, passed away recently, and everyone in the group reached out to him, my understanding, um, to express condolences. And so, you know, I thought that out of tragedy, that is, there's, you know, that was sort of a really human interaction. Um, and so that happened. So, um, so I think, you know, all of that is to say that we'll figure it out. I don't have any answers now. And it isn't like we're, you know, at this point, putting a schedule in front of anyone and saying, you know, uh, hey, look, you know, it's Tom's dog's birthday. You all have to show up and it's a potluck. <laughs> right. 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 So. I would think, I mean, if I took the job when we run the show as a job and you have to be professional. Right. I wanted to be on time and I wanted to, you know, do a good job. And if I were in their situation and you sign up after this huge fucking scandal that everybody's literally intervening, you know, like putting into their veins, smoking, snorting, they can't get enough of it. You would say, if I sign up to do this again, I'm going to have to have interactions with all members of the cast. Otherwise, why would I sign up to do it? I right. mean, I think there has to be a concession from the three and from the others that might be pissed off at the three that we're, we're signing up to do this. Th these are the, this, this is what the show is about. So we have to play in the same sandbox together to make good television. Are Tom and Raquel even still together? If this was March, it's June. Well, I, I think that's a, you know, I know that they're still talking. I don't, you know, Raquel has been um, in, has been indisposed. Raquel is um, in a, is right now in a, uh, in a mental health facility and mm -hmm. is trying to sort of center herself and um so she's been um you know she's been on her own obviously so she's been sort of isolated um so i can't speak to, to sort of where things are tom has been um and he's been traveling a bunch with his band and um and which is probably a good thing to you know in some ways not to be just cooped up at home um kind of you know trapped in this um so i, I think that all remains to be seen i mean you know, this is an extreme version of two people who ended up having a relationship with each other and, and you know, alienating a lot of people and are stuck with each other. Right. The, the, because the reaction to it is so strong. So I think, you know, it sort of remains to be seen what happens between them. So let me ask you this. So you have this expectation where you've had like this gangbuster season. It's gone viral. You probably brought on, you know, you know, broken all ratings records, brought on a lot of new viewers. And so next season, you know, it's like, is it going to be the limp dick season? So there have been rumors that you were going to bring back an, another like old retired Vanderpumper. And so you can tell us here first, Alex, your good old gals from Oklahoma, who's in the running from the castaways to come back on uh, Vanderpumps. Well, I think it's likely that next season is the same uh, principal cast that you've seen, and then there might be some appearances from uh, from others. But we're not looking to, um, you know, just shake things up by throwing other people into the stew. <laughs> um, so it's a it's a rumor that makes a lot of sense, right? Because it's because that is like. So basically he's saying the rumors that Jax and Brittany and Kristen Doty are coming back full time are not true. 
But he's not saying that they may not make special cameos or appearances, pop at, pop up at events and stuff. And I also don't think the rumor is about all of these spinoffs. Like, it's going to be Stassi and all these people getting all these spinoff shows. I don't think that's true either. I We know that Lisa Vanderpump is getting Vanderpump Villa. I think that's filming in France, though. And then also Lisa Vanderpump is opening up um, another restaurant in... Oh, where is she for opening it up? It's someplace like San Jose or I don't, I can't remember where it is, but she's opening up another restaurant that's not in West Hollywood. Still a group of friends that are really connected to each other. Right. Um, so I, I get where it's coming from, but, um, but I also think that we want to see, you know, uh, this group hash it out and we want to see this group figure it out. And as much as like, sure, look, I always feel the pressure. I certainly do after this because I, to your point, I think it would be, you know, easy for, for expectations not to be met. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't want that obviously, but, um, but we also don't feel like we need to do any stunt or, you know, stick a firecracker up the ass of the show. But right. I, mean, we, I think we have a lot to work with. <laughs> right. You've got lots of firecrackers. Okay, Alex, yeah. now we're going to play a game with you called had it. All right. So that was like the bulk of the good interview. Listen, Alex Baskin, I know I dragged you this episode, but I actually, I, I mean, no disrespect to you, but I'm just, I got to call it like I see it. I don't know how production didn't know. And I don't understand how production, how production wasn't protecting Tom and Ariana and by proxy Raquel. And I don't believe you in this interview. I think you're still lying. Because what you're saying doesn't make logical sense. And unlike some other people like Raquel and Ariana, I'm not going to let people gaslight me. You're not going to tell me that what I see is not what I see. And from what I saw, y'all knew. And you're still protecting and you're still deflecting. It's really weird and really bizarre. And I don't know why. <sighs> Lake Tahoe. Thank you, Ann Lisa. Yes, Lake Tahoe. She's opening up a, a restaurant in Lake Tahoe. Thank you so much. But as always, stick around, Candy Cane, because I'm going to take your Candy Cane questions and comments. So as always, let me know what you think. Put it down below and be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's take some Candy Cane questions and comments. And I will also